Hi, this is Scott from Digital Fish with a video on how to take better fishing photos. I've been practicing photography for about 30 years and made plenty of mistakes during that time, but I've developed my photography to a point where I can take a fairly decent photograph. I'm a regular contributor for Fishing in God's Own magazine and also New Zealand Bay Fisher magazine. So photography in itself is a massive subject, so rather than getting too technical, I'm just going to run through some tips that you can practice when you're out fishing and taking photographs. Fishers are often out at dusk and dawn, and this is a fantastic time to be taking images. It's often called the golden hour as the light changes, and this is a great time to take photographs. The dilemma I find myself in often, at, particularly at these times, is do I fish or do I take photographs? When you can do both, chuck a line in and pick up a camera, uh, but that's often when the fish start to bite. So what I'm going to do is give some tips and then we're going to do a bit of critiquing of some images, uh, some deconstruction and try and figure out what makes some images good and what could be improved. Tip number one, always have a camera with you, even if it's your phone, and remember to take photographs. Good camera gear helps, but nothing, and I mean nothing, can replace actually taking photos every trip, analysing them and learning as you go. Your photography will get 100 times better just from taking photos every time you go out. I cannot emphasise that enough. The more you practice, the more your photography will improve. Tip number two, review your images straight after you take them. See if you got a great shot. Does everything look good? Look for things like shadows. Sometimes in a boat there's dark shadows from the hard top and bright light. Get the angler to be either in the shade or in the sun, not half and half. Check, have they got their eyes open? Or even things like water droplets or smears on your camera lens. Is the angler smiling? Well, they should be. If I'm taking a photo of someone and they aren't looking really pumped, sometimes I'll say something like, come on, hold it like it's a 20 pounder bro. Take a moment to review the image while it's all there in front of you. Tip number three, when you catch a nice fish, photograph it straight away before it dies. It will have its best colours and look its best straight out of the water. It will also look bigger because its fins are sticking out. Taking a picture at the end of the day when the fish is stiff and the colours have faded just doesn't do the fish justice. And that's not how you remember catching a good fish. You remember the fight, the freshness of the moment. So capture it before you icky the fish and store it away for eating. Tip 4. Try a few different angles. Shoot them straight on, but then also try moving slightly to the side or get them to hold the fish differently. Maybe even get down low and get them to hold the fish's head a bit closer to the camera. Tip number five, learn how to use your camera's flash. Flash can be really good for illuminating dark shadowy areas on a bright day. If someone is wearing a hat and it's sunny, they'll have shadows somewhere on their face. If there's bright side lighting, you can use the flash to even out the exposure. So both sides of the face look fairly well exposed. It's common to have the fisher stand in front of you with the sun behind you but learning to shoot into the sun can also be a good idea. Turn on the flash, get the sun behind the angler so the sun isn't shining full into the lens and take a few shots. With phone cameras, the flash usually isn't very powerful, so you may need to stand very close to the subject, like one to two meters. So we're gonna do some critiquing now or deconstruction, basically breaking down what makes a good photograph, what elements are really good and what elements could be improved. It's important to remember these are tips, they're not hard and fast rules. And so if you can apply them and take photographs that you're really happy with, that's the most important thing. Critique number one. This is a photograph of my South African mate, Raymond. This is his first kingfish. He's got a great natural smile. I like that about this photograph. The horizon isn't very straight, which for landscape images is not so good, but this isn't a landscape image, it's actually more of an action photo. So having a bit of angle is actually okay, adds a bit of drama. The horizon is also parallel to his arm, which introduces a bit of symmetry, so it works. It would be better if he wasn't wearing sunglasses, and using a flash here would have helped even out the bright reflection on his forehead and the shadow on the other side. The rod is a little bit distracting, but it's not hugely distracting. The upraised arm also helps frame the face and fish as he's holding the line, so that's positive. One downside is that there are parts of the photo which are very bright and some parts which are very dark. For example, the fish's stomach is all white, you can't see any detail, and the side of Raymond's shirt is dark and you can't see any detail there. Sometimes the difference between the lightest part of the scene and the darkest part of the scene is actually really important as we'll see in our next image. This is a great shot. The lighting is very even, so the fish is very clear, there's no bright white only parts where it's only white and there's no other details to be seen. 
The fish is in a rock pool. It's in its natural habitat and the reflections provide a frame around the fish, which is the subject. The bottom of dark reflection is actually me. I position myself to not cast a reflection over the fish. What also makes it special is that you can see your reflection in the top third of the image where the sun is hitting the rocks. You can tell it's early morning or maybe early evening. Here we come across a photography principle, the rule of thirds. The idea is that it usually works better to have your subject aligned in thirds. The snapper's eye is in the lower left hand third point. The tail disappears near the top third. The fish's body lines are roughly in the full length thirds. The colours are beautiful because it's fresh and still alive. The perspective is really strong. The way the fish's head and eyes are in the foreground and it tails off into the background. Your eye naturally follows it back. I focus the camera lens on the eye. The lips are a little out of focus, but they're also a little distorted because they're a little bit more under the water. Could it be improved? Maybe if the fish's fin was poking back along the body, more instead of pointing straight across the frame. But it's a small detail. Critique number three. We talked about the rule of thirds. Sometimes straight on also works fine. I like this image because the kingfish is framed in a bed of seaweed. The lighting is very even. There's no harsh shadows or large areas of white or highlights and the colours are lovely. The rock formation is interesting but not too distracting. It might have been worth flipping the fish over because you can see the gaff wound in its head. Not so pretty. And there's a few scrapes on the fish's flanks. Critique number four. What's good? Well, John here is looking pumped. It tells the story of a great catch. The fish is fairly well exposed. The colour is okay. Most of John's face is evenly exposed, but there are a few shadows. A flash could have helped. A few things to improve. There's another fisher out of the frame, casting a fairly big shadow on his leg, and it breaks up the even lighting. There's another person's foot in the shot. The green tail is distracting, and it would have looked better if the fish was held not quite so close to John, but a bit more parallel to his body. It would have looked bigger again. Critique number five. So this has some good strong compositional elements, again the rule of thirds. Anthony's head, his shoulders, the kingfisher's head and eye, the waistline, also the body line has a strong diagonal line, which makes it look more interesting. The lighting is good. It's a bit cloudy so there's no harsh shadows under Anthony's hat or highlights on the white parts of the fish. Really nice colours in the kingfish. There's yellow in the fish and it also matches a bit with the yellow in the boat. I left some space across the top in case the editor wanted to use that space for maybe a front cover or maybe a title. It's not a huge fish, but it's a good photo and the fisher has a nice natural smile. What could be improved? Well, the rod is a little bit distracting and so is the white zipper on the bow of the boat. So if you wanted to, you could Photoshop out the rod and the zipper. So we've just done a bit of deconstruction, some critiquing of images to figure out you know, what makes a great photograph and what elements could be improved. The next time you see a fantastic fishing image, ask yourself, what makes it so good? And then take those principles and start practicing them. If you get a really awesome shot, you know what, don't be afraid to send it in to the editor of Fishing Magazine. It needs to be fairly high quality or high res, so three megabytes or higher. But you know what, you just might get some cash for it. I'll look at doing a part two where we start to talk about things like um, aperture, focal length, different cameras and photo editing which can make a big difference to your final images. So there's some tips to help you take better images, uh, practice, take your camera with you and uh, good luck. This is Scott from Digital Fish with Content That Catches.